excuse me, I hear you want to become a developer. Well, in this video, I'm going to share how I would become a developer if I was to start over today. Let's get into the video. If I was to start over today, what would I do differently? Right off the bat, I would just start. I think that was my biggest problem years ago was that I waited months before even trying to learn my my first markup language, which was HTML, HTML and CSS. I'm known as a guy who got his first job in three months, but what people don't realize was that I waited three months before even trying to learn how to code. So imagine if I actually started three months sooner. And if I was to start over now, I wouldn't do that. I would just go ahead, figure out what I wanna be. Is it a front-end developer or is it being a back-end developer and start learning code right off the bat. I think that is extremely important. Now, what would I do then? Would I be a front-end developer or would I be a back-end developer? I think that is a decision that you have to choose. For me, if I was to start over, I would be a front-end developer, focus on front-end development, and then get my first job as a front-end developer, then slowly transition to learning back-end as well and become a full-stack developer. Why is this so important? This is very important because from my experience, right, and from what I've seen and from what I've negotiated with and et cetera, I genuinely believe that I make much more now focusing on data backend than what I probably would have ever made as a front-end developer. I really believe that I probably would have maxed out at maybe 160, maybe $150,000 total compensation if I was only focused on React and JavaScript. Am I saying that $150,000, $160,000 a year isn't a lot? That is a lot of money. I like making $50,000 to $100,000 more than $150K a year. It is pretty nice having more money in your pockets, right? So I, I, I personally would eventually transition to full stack because full stack and backend developers, from what I've seen, tend to make more. So anyway, if I had to start over again, I would start as a JavaScript developer, then transition to a backend developer, becoming a full stack developer so I can get more bang for the buck, right? Get paid more money. Yes, the job may be more stressful, but who doesn't want to make more money, right? Now let's move on to the next steps. Now I'm deciding, okay, I'm gonna start learning code and I'll be a front end developer. Now, what do I need to do? I need to figure out where I'm gonna learn how to code. Well, if it's going to a coding bootcamp, which is not bad at all, you can choose a coding bootcamp, that's fine if you, I would still go to sell taught route because I genuinely believe in my work ethic, my discipline when it comes to learning code. So what I would do is I would find a course online that I could use. You could use free code camp. There's things like Code Academy out there. I personally, again, I use Zero to Mastery. And if you want to check them out, link in the description below, but you do not have to use them. I have seen thousands of people use Zero to Mastery and all of them recommend it, a lot of them recommend it. And I do too. I was actually using Zero to Mastery before I even realized they had an affiliate program. So that is why I'm more than happy to promote them. Anyway, anyway, I would use Zero to Mastery and I would go through their junior to web development course, right? I would learn HTML and CSS and then JavaScript, but this video isn't about how to do it in three months or six months. This video is just about how to become a developer right off the bat. So I wouldn't put a time frame on how much time I should put into learning code. Now, I don't want to waste a lot of time. I could do it in six months, but I don't want to stress myself out. I still want to have some, a little bit of a life outside of work and learning code still, right? So what I would do differently than I did last time, rather than trying to rush it like crazy, is I would just take my time. Now, when I'm learning HTML and CSS, it is, it is important that I don't spend too much time learning it. I would max it out at maybe three months, four months tops, because everything that you need to know about HTML, CSS, you can literally Google. How to build a nav bar, how to make things mobile friendly, um, how to, to position a div, an element to a particular spot, depending on where you are on, on the browser and et cetera, you name it, right? Tailwind CSS, how to Google that, that's all on the internet. So I don't need to memorize as much as I thought I did in the beginning right? Spend three to four months on that, then really focus on JavaScript. I didn't learn React.js. I didn't learn Next.js, but I would first learn vanilla JavaScript, make sure I understand the nuances of JavaScript so that when I do the technical interview in the future, when they test me on JavaScript, I can pass that interview. And then once I finally have a good foundation of JavaScript, maybe spend three months on that, start learning, or maybe two months and start learning React.js, get very comfortable and good at React.js, and then do Next.js and build a couple projects. And after I'm learning all these different technologies, JavaScript libraries, what I would do is make it a goal to build like 10 to 15 projects in React. Now, I think a mistake that I made before was that I focused on only using projects in the tutorials I was using. I didn't try to build products outside of tutorials. I didn't use technical blog posts that people never put on their portfolio, but I would go to like dev.2 
and really look at technical blog posts on there and build whatever technical blog posts they have in React.js and build 10 to 15 projects, put that on my GitHub, put that on my portfolio. And even on top of that, another thing I would do differently is I never committed anything and I never pushed anything to GitHub, right? If you look at my GitHub, it's all white checkboxes because I just did, I never really pushed anything there, right? I never. So my goal is it would be to commit something every single day and make sure every day of the year on my GitHub account, it has a green checkbox so that when hiring managers look at my GitHub, they see, dang, this guy actually codes every single day. And that was, that's what I would do. Now, other than that, one mistake I know that I, I made is that I would study code at home. <laughs> my biggest mistake. I would study code in my living room or on my bed because I didn't have a living room document to study in unless everyone was out of the house because I didn't have my own place when I used to live in California. One thing I would do differently is find a place to help me really focus. I think that is extremely important. Mainly because I have dyslexia, it is hard for me to focus anyway when I learn how to code or just reading in general is hard anyway for me. And so what I would do differently is really find somewhere to focus. And so for me, what I did eventually in the past was I found a boba shop that had really good internet that was quiet during the day. Um, and sometimes it would be allowed as well. And that was a place I would go to all the time to learn how to code. Now, I think one thing that can help you, right, to help you focus, if you have a hard time focusing just like me, um, what I have is something called like, I have the AirPods Max, right? I have the AirPods Max. These are nice, but these are also very expensive. These are half a grand. These are over $550, not even including tax and shipping, depending on where you buy this. And these are really expensive. And so I want to go to today's sponsor and talk about a budget noise canceling headphones that are really taking over the market right now, which is Soundcore by Anchor. Soundcore is pretty amazing. So shout out to Soundcore for sponsoring this video and sending me these headphones. It's because of sponsors like them that I'm able to create the content I do for y'all and buy all this equipment that I am able to use to make content for y'all as well. So I want to take the next 69 seconds to just check this out and see what is so amazing about these headphones that I see that's all over the internet right now, right? So these are the Soundcore Space Q45. So these are noise canceling headphones. So what's pretty amazing about these headphones right off the bat as I was reading the back, is that number one, they have adaptive noise canceling, but while using adaptive noise canceling, your battery life lasts up to 50 hours. So let's open this real quick. I'm excited. Let's see how this looks like. Let's go. Boom. It comes with a case. Okay, that's nice. I didn't think it would come with a case. This is really nice. Okay, okay. All right. This is a nice case. So let's open this. Let's just hear this real quick. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Yo, wait, what, how much are these? Where's my cell phone? Hold on, let's check on Amazon right now. You can probably see from there. So these are about $150. I can get them overnight, which is nice. So they're all over Amazon already. That's not bad. Okay, so these are $150. But like, check this out. L look how nice these are. Wait, what? Like, just comparing it to my AirPods Max. Like, I can argue that these earphones feel better. Let me just put on my AirPods Max. Okay, AirPods Max. I do love the AirPods Max because they easily connect to my phone. All right. Let's check this out. Let's see how comfortable they are. These are actually not bad. They, they rest really comfortable on my ears. That's not bad at all. Let's listen to this. If I had to choose between my AirPod Pros, right, in regards to sound qualities, these headphones win. Yeah, so these are pretty amazing. So Soundcore, I wanna thank y'all for sponsoring the video. Check them out, I'll put the link in the description below. All right, so let's get back to the video. Last but not least, which is really important, that I would do, which I didn't, which is why I also started my YouTube channel, by the way, because this didn't really exist six years ago, is joining a community where you can meet other people learning code, where you can struggle with them, where you can uh, make mistakes with them. Go to meetups. Meetups are back now after the pandemic. Going to meetups, making friends, trying to find people who are better than you, who are learning as well, but are better than you and can push you. I think that's extremely important because the people you are, are around will determine how far you go to. Like I'm friends with a lot of YouTubers who are much more successful than me on YouTube. They push me like crazy to make my content even better. Even when it comes to work, my manager, my colleagues are much better developers than me. They push me so much to keep pushing myself and giving more talks at around the world. Like I'm literally going to lead a talk in London. I'm going to lead a hackathon in October where everyone who submits a PR will get 500 bucks. 
talk about that another time. <laughs> but anyway, so finding people that you can really build relationships with, network with, and push you to make yourself even better as a developer is extremely important. All right, that exactly what I would do differently if I was to start over today and more to anything, don't wait. Don't let imposter syndrome slow you down. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let excuses stop you and start learning. Anyway, thank you all for watching. This is Krishan. This is the Life of Developer, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.